Millennium, the Millennium Challenge Corporation. Have you heard of the Millennium Challenge Corporation? It's an institution set up by the United States by George W. Bush in addition to USA to facilitate investment in uh, essentially agriculture outside of uh, America, inside the primary focus is Africa and as a result of and the Millennium Challenge in order they don't the Millennium Challenge Corporation intervenes not through loans but through grants and in order to qualify for the grants <coughs> African governments have to go through a very similar process of structural adjustment in other words satisfying the Millennium Challenge uh, Corporation that it is allowing for free um, uh, the free of the economy, liberalization and so on and the result has been in Africa alone that through its intervention between 51 and 63 million hectares has been sold off to foreign corporations not only US, not only European Chinese, Brazilian, Brazil, particularly in Mozambique, in the soya industry. And this 51 to 63 million hectares is equivalent to the entire size of France. Linked to this initiative are the very companies that, that were <coughs> critical to the subprime crisis in the United States. The, those that insured the, um, what's the word, the uh, collateral, uh, the securities, no? They are inside Benin, inside uh, Rwanda providing insurance to foreign corporations against any risk to their investments. So we have the intervention now uh, in Africa uh, of those that were very much part of the subprime uh, crisis. So in the face of this in the space of this tremendous wave, and I'm talking about at the level through, transmitted through the question of the debt, and I want to emphasize the continued importance for Africa of debt, through trade liberalization, the EPAS, through the uh, breakdown of the state, through um, this new wave of uh, land uh, grabbing, we have to ask the question, can we expect a similar new wave of resistance that can confront the asymmetrical might of the colonizers during the time of colonialism? So, when, when the period of colonialism, both at the level at the time of occupation and at the time of the independence struggle, there was a massive rise of resistance, of organizations, of movements, of liberation movements. That history, which I earlier said is being killed by the lack and the loss of hope, can we can it be a vehicle, can it be a, an instrument for a revival of hope? A revival of struggle against this new process of recolonization because these traditions will be extremely important for movements that take up for peasant movements for movements that are struggling for land it's going to be important for them to be able to make the linkage it's not only a process, it's not only an instance of being displaced by Daewoo, 
or by the Millennium Challenge Corporation, but it's been displaced by a system, and by a system that is in deep, deep uh, crisis. And I think this is where this process is very important, where this discussion is very important, for us to come to an, a better understanding of the nature of the crisis and the link to the, the tragedy that has been, been Africa since colonization. And this is where I think the social forum process itself is extremely important in terms of the kind of ways in which it inspires new movements and integrates them into globalized resistances. And I think what we urgently need as we think of our discussions, which is going to ask how do we take this process forward to Dakar, to the World Social Forum, we must say that we urgently need to involve many more Africans and these movements in this discussion so that they can articulate much more eloquently than I the way in which they have to live a crisis of, 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 a, of a plundering capitalism, a capitalism that has extracted the resources. And this is why I think Africa is incredibly important for this discussion, because it remains rich, extremely rich in natural resources. And that is why it is poor.